Oh, so sad. I was expecting that the resin will be enough, but turns out my estimation is wrong. <laughs> so sad. I ran out of resin when I was printing this model on Hagi Reflex RS. There is no local reseller here in my country and the resin shipment got delayed because of long national holiday here. So I decided to test third-party resin on my Hey Gear Reflex RS. Hello everyone, I'm Dennis and this is Hey Gear Reflex RS resin hack. I aware of other video that show their tests for third-party resin on the Hey Gears printer, but I haven't watched them because I don't want to be influenced by their result and this is the first time I am using this Sunlu 14K resin. I don't have experience with this resin at all. I bought it especially to test it on my RS. So I could share this unbiased experience of mine with everyone. Wait, wait, I need to change, change, I need to change weapon. My target is I need numbers, especially the exposure time, because I am so used to other slicer print setting where I can see and adjust the number, but not much I can tell from Blueprint Studio. Even when I ask Hey Gears directly, they cannot give me the numbers. Not sure why. So, my best choice is to record the exposure during printing by printing the same object on different print profile and then analyze the time frame to get the exposure time on each profile. But there is a problem. I want to do a dry print to check the exposure, but it seems I am I'm able to do dry print because, you know, the sensor is not working without the build plate and it will not print. So, I cannot do dry print by removing the tank and build plate. I can still print with the tank and build plate, so I empty the tank and painstakingly wait until the plate is high enough so I can begin record the exposure. After that, check the recording on editing software to see the time frame so I could determine the exposure time. And these are all the test prints to print that one. After painstakingly analyze each recording and I have the number of the exposure. Uh, disclaimer, the number may not be super accurate but at least I am getting somewhere. So the shortest exposure is PAF10 at 1.6 second and then PAWR10 at 1.75 seconds and then PAWW10 at 1.8 and then PAP10 at 1.95 seconds. PARP10 at also at 1.95 seconds. And then PAS10 at 1.97 seconds. 1.97 seconds. After knowing all the exposure number now, things start getting interesting. You look at PAP10, 1.95 seconds, the print fail compared to the lower exposure here. So I think there must be something that is in play why this one here fail. My first guess is Hager's printer is able to adjust the light intensity on each profile setting. So I set up again using my light meter and check each light intensity. Then I painstakingly again wait until the build plate is high enough during printing so I can safely put the light meter and measure each print profile light intensity. And this is the light intensity test result. PAF10 at 4.7, 4.6, 4.8, 3.2, PARP gray 4.6 and then PARP orange 4.7. PAS10 at 4.37. This is the result of the light intensity test. Now I know why PAP10 here fail at 1.95 seconds because it has the lowest light intensity, only at 3.2. This latter model is the only thing that is almost successfully print on PAP10 because the support tip size is 0.6 mm. That is why it is strong enough for the low intensity. And the leather is almost damaged on the leather edge and this just like what? Uh, just like hollow. The details are not there for the letter E. 
and for the back yeah it is just like a big holes everywhere not much of a lettering details now let us focus to this three profile print here PAWW, PAWR and PAF10 these three here show sign of overexposed let's look at the close-up I will point them out from right to left PAF PAWR and PAWW all the front hair here they fuse to the model cheek so this is clearly overexposed on this three profile setting for the resin that I'm using and then these two print result from PAS10 and PARP10 gray I do not print with PARP10 orange at all but I just show the light intensity result these two here gives the best print result left is PAS10 and right is PARP10 gray look at the front hair they both print very well and do not fuse to the cheek at all here on the right is PAS and on the left is PARP and I could see that the PAS has a slightly better details on this lining here compared to PARP so I guess I guess the best profile setting for the resin that I'm gonna use in terms of detail is PAS 10 and the same with this letter model result on the left PAS PAS I'm sorry PAS 10 and on the right is PARP 10 you can see the letter it looks much better here on the left but because I am using another resin outside of hay gears and I want to ensure this base here prints successfully and the base is lack of any high details I choose PARP 10 gray with a slightly higher light intensity compared to the PAS 10 but remember the purpose of this video is not telling you that PARP 10 gray has the best profile to use third-party resin it is to give you a number so you don't guesstimate too much and at least you have some benchmark if you want to test other third-party resin on your hair gear printer as a result i am confident that i can use parp 10 gray print profile to print the model base using sunlu 14k resin and here the result with a little bit of asmr Actually, I was expecting at least I would get one or two bad print lines, but look here. The surface are all smooth and great, no bad print lines at all. If you find this video helpful, kindly subscribe and like this video. If you want to support my channel directly, you can check my Patreon link in video description or become my YouTube member. Thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube member. Thank you everyone for watching and see you guys in the next video.